So how many um, cars are on the property? We haven't counted them lately, but uh, there's uh, close to 200, I think. Most of us never see a car like this anymore. And it was put in here in 63. No kidding. We're about to see a dealership called Collier AMC, American Motors Corporation, which is frozen in time. It was a dealership that in the 70s closed the door, locked it up, put a fence around it, and we're gonna see what's left of it now. So this is the car dealership that time forgot. If you wanna know what a car dealership would look like if they just closed the gates and walked away, we're here. We're in Pikeville, North Carolina, probably four hours from Charlotte, which is where we started today. And I'm, I'm met here by Rob and Doug Collier, whose family owned Collier AMC, which is this dealership starting in what year? When, when did the dealership first start? 1955 selling Nash's. They had previously sold Willis Knights and Whippets in the 20s, my granddaddy did. Later in the, in the 70s, we moved down here, uh, early 70s. So this is 1970s, and how long did you run out of this building? Stopped selling new cars in the early 80s, um, oh, back yeah. when Renault got invested into AMC. My dad was never fond of Renaults too much. He, he still sold used cars all the time, and we started buying back AMCs at that time. So how many um, cars are on the property? We haven't counted them lately, but uh, there's uh, close to 200, I think. So now I haven't been here in 15 years. Right. I was here 15 years ago. Well, we don't. Yeah, we don't let people in the building now um, okay. because it's so we have some conditions. It's in disrepair. Condition, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. The, everything we see today on this film is going to be it's for sale. sale. Yeah. yeah, it's for sale. All right, you got that? If we could just walk around here. Sure. Uh, you know, I, as we walked over here, you said that red car used to be yours. They, yeah, it's a Sienna Orange 74 Javelin. It's a 360 car. It's still only, it doesn't have many miles on it. It's like, is it 63,000, something like that. And it's original paint except for the bottom down here. And you but, got this, how old were you when you got this? I was uh, 13 years old. My dad, uh, it came on the lot. It was a, uh, I said, Daddy, I, I love that car. Would you mind saving it for me? I was 13, didn't, you know. And he said, yeah. And uh, he, he turned down the other, selling it to other people. And thankfully he kept it for me. And I At dreamed- 16, you started I, to drive it? Yeah. But this car here, it, it's a unique car. 68 Ambassador, it's a V8 car, but we had a really good service department here. Oil crunch happened and the gas went up. Um, they converted this to, car to a four cylinder. They dismantled some, I forgot so exactly how it So it's still a V8? It's a V8, but they, they disabled four of the cylinders. I mean, we, you, don't, you don't ever see cars like this. You see Fords and Chevys and Dodges. That's a beautiful front end on a car and two door hardtop. Yet, you know, most of us never see a car like yeah, this anymore. Yeah, Ambassadors were very special. Yeah. Yeah, that was the top of the line, but it, you could not buy an Ambassador from American Motors without it having air conditioning. So if we could just walk around, maybe, right. could, you know, interesting stories. Now, when I walked in before, I saw, is that a Spirit AMX over there? That's actually, it looks like it because it's got the AMX spoiler on it, but it's actually a, a Eagle SX4. Um, so it's a four-wheel drive? Four-wheel drive, yeah. No kidding. It's, uh, this particular one has the Pontiac Iron Duke four-cylinder in it. AMC had a very dependable six-cylinder engine. I mean, the 4.2 and also the 232 engine was very, very dependable. When the government imposed efficiency standards on them, they had to source a four-cylinder from somebody else. And the first one they did was a Porsche Audi, Porsche 924, I think except, I that. except it's uh naturally aspirated mm -hmm. and then the next year or so they uh they put the little pontiac iron duke it's a cast iron little pontiac uh, so this so this is a four-wheel drive i mean what a rare little combination right yeah a, a little tiny hatchback four-wheel drive yeah uh, it's got 15 inch wheels and is it a four speed or is it it's a four or five yeah manual gearbox yeah all right so how do you come up with prices if somebody wanted to buy this it's under fifteen hundred dollars but that, uh, that, i mean you could you it, could go 10 years and not see one of these yeah but this one we're not we're just trying to sell it like it is yep um, i get it i got the tile ready to go on it do you but, really so this but, is uh, a, a, a this is the eagle, eagle wagon. wagon yeah this has a selectable four-wheel drive mm -hmm. and this is built on the concord um concord was the the mid-size amc Nash and AMC goes way back with station wagons. They they had a little car called a Hornet Sportabout. Oh yeah. And uh, so they this this size car was sort of ideal for American Motors. 
And were they all six cylinders? You could get a Concorde in 79 with a V8 in it, but all the Eagles would be six cylinders. Yeah, I, I remember when this came out, like all the magazines were just head over heels. About, about the time that Lee Iacocca brought Chrysler out of the doldrums and he paid off their debt to the, to the company com, country uh, in half the time he was planning on it, they had enough money to, uh, by selling these uh, little K cars like right oh, there yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in a Dodge Caravan, they started selling money uh, so much that they ended up, they wanted Jeep. Ah. They bought the whole AMC company just so they could get Jeep, basically. Got it. Got but, it. Is there anything like this in the world that you guys know of? I mean, can you think of? Well, what do you think? I mean, just the, uh, a collection of this many cars that are complete that haven't been picked over. You know, I think it's really special. My dad really didn't want to part out cars. He'd, he'd rather sell the whole car than to sell parts off of them. So that way, if somebody comes and gets a car from us, usually it has all the parts to it. It's a lot easier to restore because, you know, you're not going and yeah, looking yeah, for every yeah. little he, piece. He was soft-hearted towards cars. He didn't like to see them torn torn up. And do you guys have that same philosophy? Like, well, I yeah. can't buy the motor out of that. You gotta buy the whole car. <laughs> well, yeah. It, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, somebody came wanting uh, to buy some fender flares off an Eagle. And I told him the, the price for the flares are the same price as the car. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Boy, look at this. That. Is, this That's is a fabulous. 50 model Nash. Man. You can tell it's a 50 because the gas cap is covered. Okay. A 49 has gas cap that is, is sticking out. But this car has a lot of unique features. America stopped making cars during World War II. So everybody was wondering what the new car body style after the war because the 46 cars looked like the 40, 41 cars. Right, you know? right, right. This was the, what was Nash's version. They had tested the car in wind tunnels and it, the drag coefficient is just very low drag coefficient. Uh, they even hid the the wheels almost the fender skirt in the front yeah, yeah. it's like Crazy, yeah. yeah it's like a fender skirt but it's just a the yeah pilks. now you can jack the car up and change the tire with no problem it's got a big old coil spring and nash has had a special type of seat i have ads advertisements with a family out camping in their nash in the with car. with Man. their uh and they have bedding. screens for the windows so you can put in and then you lay the entire all the seats down into a giant bed yeah. yep they, uh, Can I open this door? Is it? I'm not sure that that side will open. Uh, yeah, it might not. Just, so I'm, I'm looking at the color. I mean, it's like I guess a light green. Or it's actually it, yellow, I think. Yeah. Sort of like yours. This is like gold and with red wheels. Uh -huh. It must have been fabulous. Yeah. Um, this, as you can tell, it came out of California. But so, we'll go in the back here. So the the tail lights are part of the trunk. Yep. If you lift that up all the way, you see uh, a reflector. If you're changing your tire. You have a reflector, so you won't. It's oh, sort of yeah. like a third light. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You won't get hit, but uh, and there's a wide white, uh, fake so wide California, white. California. So 30 years ago, that was on the road in California. Yeah, yeah. So. There's another one. I want you to see the uh, instrument cluster. Oh yeah. <laughs> Went way back. Uh, they had unitized bodies, but um, if you look, this is the inner rocker, and it's got, it's got the oh, holes. That. That's stronger. See those holes there? Yep, yep. That's stronger than a flat sheet of piece right. of metal. It, when they stamp those holes in it, it, it makes it a lot stiffer and stronger and lighter. So a, a car this big was only like 3,400 pounds. It was even that it was this big. So just think about that. These cars were unibody, which means it had no separate chassis body. They're all together in the 30s. So this is Ford and Chevy and Chrysler didn't start that until the 60s, yeah, at yeah. least. Mm -hmm. wow. So I'm really learning a lot, because you, you know these cars, you just don't see them and you don't learn about them. Yeah. If you like these videos, you really should check out the Haggerty Drivers Club. You get 24 seven roadside assistance with flatbed towing, subscription to an award-winning magazine and more. Sign up today. The link is in the description below. So what is this on oh, NAS Custom? Yeah, it's still the air flight body style. It's got backup lights that yeah. are, it says NASH on them, they're genuine NASH. Mm -hmm. But, um, and you can tell it's a 49 because- Oh, no gas cover, The yeah. gas cover's not there. But look here, they call it the Uniscope. It's an instrument cluster. Everything you need to see is right there on the steering column. Temperature, uh, oil, and odometer, speedometer, right on that. You don't have to look yep, right yep, down yep. on the dash. What a good idea. Now look at that hood ornament up yeah, there. Yeah, this is- I'm um, go around the other side again. One of the biggest names in glamor art, George Petty. Uh -huh. And Nash commissioned him to do so that's a factory hood. Yeah, it is a factory hood ornament. It's a cross between a lady's figure and an airplane. 
if you could notice the lady's feet and all. Well, I'm, I'm, and, it's pretty sexy, I gotta say. Yeah. You know, when we were walking in before the cameras turned on, you showed me a, a little slot car that... Yeah. They did Don Yinko and uh, Mr. Norm and uh, Baldwin Motion, and then somehow they ended up doing us. Well, you're in fancy company. <laughs> I guess so. It's, so this is an HO slot car. You can see it's got the little connections like a, an Aurora car, but it's got Collier, Collier Motors, Motors on there, isn't that something? Yeah. All right, so what other interesting cars do you, can you think of uh, here? Well, there's a little pacer over here that was a team highball. You familiar with Amos Johnson? Amos Johnson, he's a friend of mine. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, he, he had team highball racing he, uh, they were out of Raleigh, right? They were. Oh, it's got so, flares and stuff on it? Yeah, these that. are... Uh, I gotta take a picture of this. Those are fiberglass fenders in, in the rear rear flare. And if you look, Team Highball. Oh yeah, look at that. And has does, has this, Amos been here? No, we bought this from a fellow uh, whose friend was Kurt Spensner. He was one of the drivers. He's, he's still in... in the, he moved to go to teach, teach racing at Road, Road America in Atlanta. So it's got a manual gearbox and a six cylinder. Huh. So that is that the only AMX you have left? Uh, there's one in towards the front that uh, I've got, I've just taken a deposit on. So this this, this, this is sold already. Uh, uh -huh. A fella who who's had AMX is another. He had a Rebel machine. If you can imagine an AMX, if you, if you don't know much about it, this was a two seater car. Very unusual. Think about the United States two seater cars. Early Thunderbirds were two seaters. Corvettes were two-seaters, and American Motors came out with this AMX. So did the Javelin come out first? Javelin came out early 68, and mid-year 68, the AMX came out. All right, so there's the Javelin over there. You can see that's got a quarter window behind it. You can see this car does not have a full quarter window. It's got a half quarter window. I have the feeling it just chopped that car down and, and made the AMX. I'm, I'm simplifying things, probably. You know, these cars were muscle cars, they were sports cars, they were race cars. This was a prototype here. This uh, this is called the Vignali AMX. They sent two Rambler Americans to uh, Vignali Coachworks in, in in Italy. Yeah. And they came back a few weeks a few weeks later with with this car here. So they invented the AMX? AMC had designed it okay. and they had it had they had, had all the plans but to actually flesh it out and put it to actually make the car, uh, Vignali Coachworks made the first one and stuff so like that. So a car like that is is that going to be restored or? What? No, no, no. This is a, a, a guy who's a he's has he has another AMX. He uh, he wants it basically as yard art, I think. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but the Javelin was a four seater car. <clears throat> this particular year was the first first year that Mark Donahue um, came over from Chevrolet with Roger Penske as team captain and Roger. He, Roger Penske and Mark Donahue drove this car. They, but they had to make a certain number of them to homologate them. Right. Uh, my dad ordered a brand new Mark Donahue Javelin. Uh, for, for himself or for the dealership? For the dealership. Ha! Huh. In fact, a, a, an acquaintance of yours, uh, Ben Seacrest up in Maine, he, he bought the car. We, we followed it from this little old lady my dad <laughs> sold the car to, to another fella. We chased it down and we became the eighth owner. And then uh, we sold it to Ben. He, he be, he's become a good friend of ours. So this this, looks <laughs> this like a, that's got a Continental kit on it. That's yeah. a, how it's been you, here a while. How, how did you park this car? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the trees. Yeah. Uh, at, the car preceded the trees. So look, you can see coming right through the Continental kit here. Yeah, yeah. Wow. There's there's a few of those oddities here mm -hmm. that uh, it just you know a little bit of the inattention you know and it sort of catches up with you. Yep. Yep. And then also here's here's Look another at the size of that fender. Uh -huh. Oh, country club. You were talking yep. about that. It's a two-door hardtop. Um, Look this at was, the size of that car. This it's was, huge. This was Penn and Farina's design. This little mm -hmm. uh, embossed area here, and this is a, another George Petty hood ornament. Being an artist, he would put his signature signature in the casting. So if you get a new old stock one, if you can find one, sometimes they yeah. run the thousand, twelve hundred dollars. But it's got an oil bath air cleaner. And so that, is that a seven main bearing engine? Yes, it's a seven main bearing. The Nash Healy's had two carburetors. They would call it. They called it. In fact, we have a red Nash brake. There's they got dual jet fire, uh, six cylinder motor, um, Le Mans engine. So one thing I've always found interesting with, with Ramblers is, is there's no intake manifold. It's, right. The carburetor bolts right to the head. Yeah. And the it gets hot quick. Isn't the exhaust manifold the same thing? It's it's a tube. It's uh. There's, now this, there's no cast iron manifold. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's, everything was built into the head. So I mean, I guess in some gets, ways it was brilliant. 
and in other ways it didn't work. It gets warm quick. You don't have to wait wait for it to warm up. But does it overheat? Like could it boil the gas? I don't. I don't think. Vapor I don't think they ever had that trouble. Uh -huh. One, they got such good gas mileage. One time, my dad was working on a car, and the man lived out in the country, and he came and paid his bill. It was something they work working on a fuel pump or something, and he went out in the country. The man did, got a mile out in the country, and it, it gave out, it stopped running, and so he hitchhiked, hitchhiked back to talk to my dad, and, and uh, they had forgotten to turn the gas back on, and he oh. had driven just with what was in the bowl, had driven all the way out in the country. One mile. Yeah. What else we got over here? Any uh, well, cool? we're getting sort of picked over pretty much. Uh, <laughs> so I guess we've seen maybe a hundred of your 200 cars here, but I'm, I'm, I'm eager to see that one that you talked about in a barn not far yeah. from here. Can we, can we go yeah. over there? Yeah, we can. This is what you call it. A real barn fire. <laughs> wow, no kidding. So one family ownership. Yep, in fact, before I was born, it was put in, I'm 59 years old now. Before I was born, it was put in here and it's not been, it's been not been out since. There's still magazines in here from 1963. So why was it put in here? You know, we always had a lot of cars to drive, so he just put it in here to sort of preserve it. Mm -hmm. um, they always had something to drive. In fact, as a collier, we didn't put much gas in cars because we didn't know from one day to the next whether we'd be selling or not. So uh, they said when you when a collier comes into the world, they issue them a set of jumper cables and a gas can because oh, we're always geez. needing something like that. It's all dark green. It's not a two tone or anything. Right. It's, it's all dark yeah. green. What does that say down there? Pinafrina. Pinafrina. Yep. And if you could probably get a door open, if you could see how nice the interior is. So it's uh, got, it's, this looks like an accessory. Shades. That was a factory uh, accessory, yep. I know one of these doors will open. And how many miles are on this? I don't know, it, it has over 100, which is a bragging right for a car of the era. So I'm not sure jump, if it'll jump out of me? Well, we, <laughs> there is a little skeleton of a cat or something on the other side over here. Well, you know, all right, so here's a car that's been here for 61 years. And it opens and slams like a fresh car. So there's a newspaper in there from the News and Observer, 1964, okay. sitting on the front seat. I, I don't, don't, see, know, I don't sure. see a clutch pedal. If you don't see a clutch, it's automatic. So it looks like it's got 122,000 miles. Okay. Well, you know, <laughs> the interior is amazing. Yeah, he put the, if you look in the back, there's plastic over the seats. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, look at that. My Baby Magazine, Good Housekeeping. All right, so we need to see what was what was the news <laughs> in 1964. There you go. Uh, okay, this is cool. So this is March 1st, so we're only a few days away from its 60th birthday. Uh-huh. I was born November of 64, so this 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 was put in here before I was born. Wow. Large British airliner carrying 83 is lost. Vanishes on flight over the Alps. Hey, look at there. That's Barry, Barry Goldwater. Oh, look at that. Barry Goldwater, who yeah. owned an AMX. Yeah. What's the chance of that? That's not, that's very rare. President Johnson bears amazing jet interceptor. Isn't that so? LBJ marks 100 days chief. Very interesting. Wow. And our local mayor has, uh, he's entertaining the idea of of putting this in the local, the town museum. Isn't that wonderful? That's one we don't know yet if it's going to happen, but that's that's the offer that we're understanding right now. So I have to admit to you that I've been to Collier AMC before, but it was 15 years ago. It was 2009 that I last met Robbie and at that time his father Robert, and the dealership looked different. There were more cars that could have been probably jump started and driven away. And you've done a good job selling off some inventory. You got some work to do, I'm, yeah. I'm afraid. But uh, you know, it, it, it's neat to carry on the legacy that your father and grandfather started. And I really appreciate you meeting us and uh, giving us another tour around. And maybe I'll be around in 15 years again. Okay, there you go. All You're right. welcome back. That might be a new shopping center. Oh, yeah, there you go. Robbie, thanks so much. Lord willing. All right, thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you.